Example 115. When Mendel conducted his famous genetics experiments with peas, one sample of offspring consisted of 428 green peas and 152 yellow peas. Mendel expected that 25% of the offspring peas would be yellow. Find a 90%, 95% confidence interval estimate for the true proportion of yellow peas. Do the results from part A contradict Mendel's theory? So there's a little typo here in my printed out copy of the notes, so I had to correct it, but um, it said 25%, actually. It should not say 5%, it should say 25%. So we're going to work it out with that number being 25%. All right, so let's begin the problem and look at what it's asking us to find. It says find a 95% confidence interval estimate, right? So we know we're doing a confidence interval, and it says it's for the true proportion of yellow peas. So we know it's a confidence interval for the proportion of yellow peas. Let's start writing down what we need for the problem. The n, first of all, it says one sample of offspring consisted of 428 green peas and 150 yellow peas. A common mistake is for people just to assume the large number here is your sample size. That's not right, actually. If you think about it, this is one sample consisted of this many green peas, this many yellow peas. So collectively, how many total peas were there? Well, if you add 428 and 152, you'll get 580. So there's 580 peas total in the study. All right, and then there's a sample proportion we need, the p-hat. So let's look for a p-hat. So you might say, well, 25% is the p-hat, right? You might think that because it's the only percentage given in the problem other than the confidence interval. Um, percent, sorry, the confidence level. When you look at this 25%, though, you'd be mistaken if you took it for your p-hat. The reason why is we have to always remember what p-hat stands for. p-hat is the sample proportion. That means it must be derived from the sample. And in our case, this 25% came from Mendel's expectation, right? It's what he thought in theory should happen. That's not a sample proportion then. It doesn't come from a sample of data. It comes from this guy's mind, right? So Mendel decided that the percent should be 25. That's something coming from his head, from his own theoretical understanding of the, of the subject. That is not what we need for the problem, though. We're going to need the percent of peas that are actually, in fact, yellow. So what we need to do in this problem is to say, well, OK, um, what percent of the peas are actually yellow because we're talking about the confidence interval for the true proportion of yellow peas. So we're going to take that 152 here and we're going to divide it by the total 580 because remember p hat has a structure of x over n where x is the number of peas that are yellow and n here is the number of total peas. The general structure is the number of things that have the trait you're looking for, in this case this problem is about yellow peas, so we're looking for peas that are yellow over the total. Okay, either way that works out to be some percentage. Let's figure out what that is. So looking at our thing, we have 152 divided by 580. And when we're done we get 0.262 roughly, 0.262. I'm going to round it off to three places here just for your convenience, 0.262. Now, your Q hat is the complement of that, right? So what's the leftover from 1? So 1 minus 0.262, and that's what we're looking for there, right? Okay, so we're going to have 0.738 as the leftovers if you do 1 minus 0.262. Okay, so almost 74%, almost 26%. All right, and then from there, we're going to have the confidence level and alpha. All right, the confidence level in this problem is 0.95, and alpha, of course, is 0.05. From here, we need our critical value. Remember, your critical value is z alpha divided by 2. The alpha here is 0.05, so it'll be z.025. And that means we'll go to the t table, go in the 0.025 column, and all the way down to the bottom to figure out what the appropriate z score is. So let's go do that now. Okay, so we're looking at 0 0.025 in one tail and going straight to the bottom. So we see the number there at the end of the table. And we find our number to be 1.96. 1.96. Okay, so we found the answer for our z-score to be 1.960. Okay, once we have that value, our next step is to get the margin of error. So let's go ahead and do that. The margin of error, remember, is a formula that says z alpha divided by 2 square root of p hat q hat over n. Okay, so in our case it's 1.96 times the square root of 0.262 times 0.738. All right, and once you have that in there, you're going to divide by the n, which is 580. 
Okay, so let's work that out in our calculator and see what we come up with for that answer. So we have 1.96 times the square root of 0.262 times 0.738 divided by 580. Close up your parentheses, hit enter, and you get the answer 0 0.0357, so on and so forth. That is our error though. So we're going to use that in our last step of the problem, which is to perform p hat minus the error. Oops, I meant to write p hat minus the error there. And then comma p hat plus the error. Okay, so for us that's going to be 0 0.262 minus 0 0.0357 dot dot dot. And then the same thing, 0.262 plus that same error, 0 0.0357. Okay, and then finally, the interval. So 0.262 minus our error, and then the same thing plus our error. So we get the answer 0 0.226 to 0 0.298. 0 0.226. To 0 0.298. All right, so this is the range of values that we um, believe our proportion lies within, right? So we're saying we are, you know, 95% confident that the true proportion is inside the interval. So let's write that out very quickly. We are 95% confident, right? The true proportion is between, and of course we have the numbers there for what is between, right? Between these two values. Okay, so rather than rewrite the values, I'll just point to them. Now, what we wanna do then is answer the final question. What does that say about Mendel's theory? Is Mendel correct or is he incorrect, right? Or can we not say conclusively one way or the other? Well, it says Mendel expected 25% of the offspring peas to be yellow. So the first thing we want to answer is this. Do the results from part A contradict his theory? Well, I would say no, they certainly don't contradict his theory. So when you look at this interval here, you can see that the interval includes Mendel's number. He said it should be 25%, and 25% is inside that interval, so it is a candidate for the true proportion. So he might be right, basically. The interval doesn't contradict him. Now, can we say that he is right? No, we can't say for sure that he is right because, of course, if the number was actually 23% or 28% or 27%, then he would technically be wrong. But um, this interval leaves open the door for the possibility that he's correct because the interval contains the number he said it would be. And so that's it. Basically, all we can say is that he might be correct, and certainly we can say the interval does not contradict his theory.